Okay, folks, we're back again. Had the uh, the clear coat on the gallo glass, some basing on them, and show you uh, how I do this. And I've put no effort into figuring out who's on what side on, on what stand until now. So this is one of my favorite things to do because I don't know what I'm gonna get. So. Uh, We've got these 12 figures that are all done. Now, uh, I, I put them temporarily on, on coins so that I can paint them, and they stay on coins all the way up to this stage. Uh, at this point, we're gonna pop them off, and um, we're going to uh, show you how we do that. So, we've got these three 15 millimeter by 40 millimeter stands. They go four figures on each. Okay, so this is what we're gonna mount these full figures on. And um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is, these guys are already dry and everything, we're just gonna pop them off. Now these have been secured with uh, super glue. Okay, so people wonder why I use something as strong as super glue. Well, I don't have to worry about them coming off in the middle of my process. So um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna pop these guys off, all right? So all we're going to do is we're going to take our X-Acto knife, come over here to an edge, and just pop it off like that. And then I've got a container here where we recycle these guys and we use, okay? Same thing. There's one, one guy down. And we're just going to go underneath here, pop them off. I actually don't remember when I started painting these guys, but I'm pretty sure this is record time for me. It's been either one week or two weeks. I don't think it's been a week. I think it's been two weeks I've been working on these guys. But still, 12 figures in two weeks is pretty quick for me. Yeah, pop these guys off. This guy underneath here. Pop him off. So yeah, they're they're still they were super glued down, but they come off pretty easy. Some easier than others. Okay, put this away. Now we got our figures all loose. Let's see if we can uh, zoom this in a little bit. Let's try the first thing. Let's just move the camera closer. How about that? Perfect. And got it. All right. So we've got our 12 figures here. Now, um, when I'm putting them together, I hit them in pairs. Okay, so there's two of every pose. So I'm gonna split those guys up in the poses together. So these two guys are the same pose over here. These two are the same pose. Uh, where's the other one? Here. Okay. This is the same pose as this one. Uh, this one. Okay. Oh no, they're not. Oh wait, they're not, they're the same as this guy. These two guys together, these two guys together. I call these guys the axe salesmen. That's what it looks like. They're trying to sell axes to somebody on a street corner. Uh, these two go together and these two go together. All right, and we have three stands to put them on. 
Okay, so I don't do a whole lot of forethought into this. I just kind of divvy them up and see and just kind of tinker with them until I get the right composition. So we're not worried specifically what position the figures are going to be in. We just want to divvy them up over the three stands. So I just do something like this guy goes here, this guy goes here, this guy goes here, this guy goes here. Um, we'll leave the armored guys last, uh, the guys that are fully armored. Um, this guy goes here, this guy goes here, this guy goes here, this guy goes here. All right, now it gets to kind of interesting. So you put one here, that's that pose, and we put that guy there. Maybe, um, maybe I'm too close. Let's adjust this a little bit. Okay, um, and then we put one armored guy here, and we're going to put another armored guy here. All right, so let me move these guys a little bit closer so I can see, because right now I don't have my glasses on, and I can't see Jack. So uh, i got to get really closer to him. I look and see what problems I have with the mix, mixture of these figures, okay? And the first thing I see is, okay, uh, we've got... I'm going to go ahead and put my guys, and then two guys that are wearing hose, but the hose is kind of boring color. It doesn't have a whole lot of color. So right off the bat, I could trade this guy in for this guy next to him. It's the same pose, but his hose has a little bit more color. Okay? Uh, over here, we've got three guys with hose, one guy bare-legged, and this guy's got a really bright pair of hose on. And this guy is kind of a bright pair of hose also. So we're going to go ahead and guy over here. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else we have here? We've got a red-haired mustache. All these guys have mustaches. We've got a red hair, a brown, a blonde, a brown. Okay, so that part's okay. Um, this looks okay. Over here, like I said, we're not worried about the pose. The two armored guys aren't going to be next to each other. That's just silly. Okay. Um, here, there's a whole lot of gray here. So I think we'd be better off, say, moving this guy here and this one over here. Okay. Except now we got red mustache, red mustache, red mustache, and reddish. So that's not going to... This is, by the way, the, the same strategy I use. When I'm in Turks, same thing. I had all the cavalry painted, and I mixed and matched at the very end. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take this guy and move the equivalent guy back over here. It's the same pose. Uh, no, it's not. Is that a problem? No. Move him over here, because he's blonde. Okay, so now this looks better than how it was before. This guy's blonde, red, brown, red. Red, blonde, red, blonde. Okay. Uh, red, brown, blonde, brown. Okay, so so far that looks pretty good. Um, this pose. He's over there. I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so the only catch is going to be is when I put these guys on the stand, this pose a lot. So this guy, these two figures will not be in the in the far position, okay? Because they're going to be extending into the stand of another figure. Okay, so we're not we're definitely not going to do that. All right. So. Um, so, like, for instance, this guy can't be... This is kind of like a figure Sudoku, right? <laughs> this guy can't be over here. Or maybe that old uh, computer game that you got for free on your PC called Minesweeper. <laughs> All right, so... Um, because what's going to happen is I'm going to put epoxy down and I'm going to want to glue these guys down pretty quick. All right? So, let's start putting some alternative things here. If we put this guy here like this, and put this guy here, 
I don't love that this axe is like way out here in the in, in some other figure's face. This guy could be anywhere. Okay. And I don't want the two armored guys next to each other. So this positioning seems okay for those guys. But due to the fact that most of these figures are stood are standing foot of, uh, their feet kind of apart, I'm going to have to do some kind of staggering on them. And the fact that if they were on 20 millimeter deep bases, it wouldn't make any difference because that's not the issue. It's the side to side distance, not the depth. Okay, so now we got one of these troublemakers. So let's go ahead and put them on the extreme end of where we don't need them. Okay, then let's put this armored guy next to him. So he's armored, he's gonna be in the front row. Over here. Okay. And then we got this guy. What if we put him in the back? And this guy with his ax getting ready to show it to his neighbor. I just can't put him out there and guarantee it's not going to go into another figure. I want to try to have the figure stay within the footprint, stay within the footprint of the stand as much as possible. All right, so something like that is probably reasonable on that stand. Okay, so we're going to move it slowly over here. Okay. Now we've got this guy with the ax handle that's over on that position. So let's try putting this one, not here on the end, but say here in the number two position. All right. We've got this guy on the end on that stand. So we don't want to put him over there. We're going to put him in the middle or X thing is in this position over here. So he's got to be in one of these two. So with that said, let's put him on the end. And this is the, this is the stuff that I do with every army. I just don't uh, talk to myself while I'm doing it. But this is the kind of thought that I get into. Okay, it wasn't sitting down properly. For some reason, this guy doesn't want to stand up. Let's, uh, let's take care of this. And if these guys fall over, then they fall over. But... So we're going to have him, I don't know why this guy's being incorrigible. Okay, how about now? Okay. It's going to fall over any moment. We have an armored dude in this stand up in the front. So let's put the armored dude over here. And then we're going to go ahead and put this guy in this position. Yes, yes, you want to follow over. I get it. Okay. So I don't see anything wrong with that. I think this is what we're going to roll with. And you want to do this in advance. Because with five minute epoxy, you don't want it to set. I'd like to possibly do them all in one run. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and, and we've cut our little section here that we're going to use. Our dowel that we use to apply it. And then let's get the stuff that I use to epoxy these guys down. Now, I used to use one of those syringes. And the problem with the syringes is invariably one of the two parts of the epoxy the thicker one doesn't like to come out as fast as the, the non-thicker one. So what you'll end up doing is you end up squeezing it the first time it works great. And the next time you're having to compensate more to the side that is the thicker epoxy so it comes out straight and eventually it's just very frustrating. So I've gone to using this stuff right here. I've used this stuff now for years and I've put together at least... Uh, I'd say 10 to 15 armies 
using this stuff. And you can see how little of it I've actually used. It's very, very little. This wasn't that expensive. I don't think it was more than $10 for both of these. But this is Devcon uh, five minute epoxy hardener and then the, uh, the epoxy resin, two part. Okay, so we're gonna squeeze this down and, um, and glue these guys together. Now the fact that it sets in five minutes, but the part about it that sets in five minutes is I can start working on doing the basing relatively soon. I don't have to worry, wait, you know, a couple hours or anything like that. The other thing is if, if it dried any slower, uh, it has a tendency of the figures could fall over and then I could get that epoxy on them and they get make a mess and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, let's move these guys back. That's okay. We know where they're at. Um, all right, let's uh, let's take this off and let's do some squeezins here. And this stuff smells like almost like pee. Sometimes. Which one's this one? The hardener. The hardener stickier. Yeah, definitely. It's stinkier and it's thinner too. Okay. We're going to mix this up. And then all I do is we're actually going to do this stand last because this guy is incorrigible. So we want to we'll make sure that he doesn't fall towards the beginning and we have a problem on our hands. All right. So all I do is I've already figured out how they're kind of going to go. So I'm just going to take them, dip them, and then just come right back down and put them where, where he was at. Okay, same thing this guy here. This guy back here. Don't need a whole lot, it is epoxy. It's, these guys, will, this will hold like nobody's business. I'm actually going to turn this guy. There we go. So he's looking forward. Come on. There we go. This guy was here. This guy was here. All right. So we're going to put this guy all the way in the back. Yeah, there's no way that this figure would have worked on the one side that his ax is sticking out of. It just isn't gonna work at all. Want to make sure that axe isn't overhanging onto another stand. Need to have. Okay, this should be fine front to front and back to back. And then over here, troublemaker dude. We'll do him last. And the reason I do him last is the epoxy will be thicker and it'll be less likely for him to fall over while he's in uh, that position. Here.
there you have it. That is now I'll probably wait um, 30 minutes or so for messing with these guys and uh, come on. That's them. I wish they weren't staggered, but I don't think there's anything you can do about it unless you're going to do put them on a stand that's twice as wide. So um, this is four stands of blade. Okay, and then um, I'm going to wait about a half an hour with them, and then we're going to put a little goop on them. The Liquitex resin sand. I don't know why this doesn't want to pinch out. Come on, pinch out. I think that's all the way out. All right, so while we're waiting on them, what do you do? Well, there's always something else you could be working on, okay? So, um, yeah, so the, tonight I'm gonna check and make sure that I, in fact, don't have the correct nights. I'm surprised that um, that was the case, but, uh, you know, no biggie. I wanna make sure we get the right ones. So, um, we'll just, if, if we don't, if I don't find them tonight, I'll just have to mail order them. And I do have a huge box to go through. So it's not like, oh, you just look in one place. I just, I looked in the obvious place where they should be in case I had them. But if not, we'll just have to mail order them. I'm already, that must be the thing of this army is the amount and you just have to wait for them. But anyhow, so the pikemen here, um, we got two guys done, three guys done. So let's work on the other ones, okay? We've got to do the other uh, the other five. And probably by the time I'm done with this, start uh, putting the goop on these uh, on these guys. So putting the goop on them. All right, and um, I know they're gonna look good. Right now they're just kind of lackluster look at these, these, these folks because it's all a lot of the same thing. It's a lot of the same pose, but... Um, you know, they'll be, they got a little bit more color if you look at them through the, on the back. Uh, but still, um, you know, they're supposed to be drab looking, you know, so. All right, so let's go ahead and continue where we were with, um, with these uh, Scott's Pikemen. Because right now, let's go take a look at this arm of this. Book four fifty eight. Um, book four fifty eight. Medieval Irish. Medieval Irish. Okay, so they can have a light horse general. Or a Scots General. Okay, so the Scots General is going to be the three, the 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 knight stand, and the light horse is uh, being coming in through the mail someday. Uh, then they have another light horse. We can't paint him as well. And then we have a light horse or an Anglo Irish calf. We're going to build him as a light horse. And um, okay, two Scots or a three bow or okay. So there's two units of pikemen. When I use them, I will be using a um, a four blade to make up the difference. And then you got the six uh, you got the six units of Saloy. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So the only other option there's going to be auxilia as well that they can have instead of those blades. But um, honestly, these guys are going to need all the help they can get. Um, otherwise, they're going to be super light. There's nothing that the auxilia is going to help them with that they need help with. Um, all right, now I put this crappy blade on here to pop these off. So we're going to put that back and we're going to put the one that's pretty fresh. Because we're going to go in here and we're going to have to chop some of this, uh, some of this now. Let's see, do I have some? Uh, what do you mount them on painting bases with super glue? Yes. Uh, that was no three hours. Ha, huh? back to paint for me, too. Looks pretty choppy. You keep skipping around. I don't know that I can fix that. 
it just is what it is. Now, I happened to watch the video that I shot for three and a half hours yesterday. It was about the same time of day as it is now. Nothing is different, and it is smooth as butter. I don't know why sometimes you get a choppy video, and sometimes you don't. The signal's the same. Let's see. Yeah, I got, uh, I got, I'm on LTE, and I got five full bars on LTE. It's not going to get any better, so. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and circumcise this guy's pike. Okay. And um, I'm going to take this little bit off the back. And then we're going to take this off the front. Okay. And then this between here and here. We need to eliminate we're just putting little cuts in it so that we can come in here and kind of like if you were going to chop a tree down right and then do some v cuts in here and take those pieces out just like if you were going to chop down a tree I didn't think I was actually going to get this to work earlier today. I, uh, it was looking doubtful. It was looking like I was going to. It's good to have backup plans. That way you're not. When something doesn't work. As planned, you still got other ways to to tackle it. I want to make sure this is out of the way completely. All right. Um, what did we do with this other guy? Did we take his thumb off? We did. Sorry, dude. No thumb for you. Bye-bye. All right, now... Okay, now... We could take Mr. Pinvice. Now we've gone through, we want to line it up, we want to line it up with this other hand, so it ends up going through you might have to reposition this a little bit. I don't mind drilling these pikes out because I know that they're never going to bend. It's just, it's just never going to bend. So with them being made out of stainless steel. Okay. So we're just going to drill in the other side.
put the pike in, we're not going to use super glue. Because what happens with the super glue is, is it becomes too brittle. So if this, the, the, uh, the seal with the super glue, and there's no flexibility to it at all, it's, and as soon as you crack that bond, it's just going to fall right off. It's going to be no good to you. So this takes some patience, okay, all the way through, clean this stuff up, is because two of them were broken. So there's no point in replacing two of them and having to deal with the rest of them also not uh, possibly bending. Okay. So there's another guy that's done. All right. What's that four halfway there? Cool. All right. Now we haven't done this pose yet. This is the same one. Oh, this is the guy we're working on. Then we had to go, we had to take, we had to take a break. So let's go ahead and take his thumb off. Okay. It's oversized anyways, it doesn't really look like a thumb. Being careful, because I don't want to overcut him. The next thing you know, I cut into his face. And this guy's ugly enough as it is. He doesn't need a, he doesn't need uh, any added deformities. Circumcise this guy's thumb off, and now we're going to start a pilot hole and it be in a weird position. So, um, I, I wish I had a smaller one of these. That's that's. I think that's what I'm going to do. Is well, now that I don't need them, huh, I need to I need to get a set of the uh, of these. Uh, what if I did it from the bottom? Nah, let's not do that. Um, I need to get a set of these. Uh, drill bits that are smaller than this one. This is like the right size, but I'd like to have one that was uh, maybe not half the size, but uh, just something that I can just to get a bite into this. Now that it's bit, I'm going to go and turn it upright. There we go. Make sure everything's still good. Yeah, it's still good. Okay. We want to test it with a pipe to make sure that um, later. Okay, and that's good. It looks like it's going to fall somewhere down here. So what I'm going to do is. I'm gonna make sure that there's a little notch here that I can also, when it's time to glue it, I, I have something to go away so that there's something behind the pipe for it to catch on. Because if you just have it glued kind of like out here in the open, there's nothing to keep this thing from sliding. The problem with these things is they're really, really smooth. So, um, but it shouldn't be an issue with epoxy. All right, we got that guy done. What are you left with? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. yeah, here he is. Uh, this is that same pose we've done. Yeah, let's go ahead and knock this guy off before we go into the other, on the, the new pose. So, we're just going to take this off. And, uh, like I said, this is the top. I've replaced pikes before. This is probably the longest it's ever taken with any of them just because of the nature of these figures. So, let's, uh, See if we got anything new here. Uh, 
Painting some last condata, I have the fast blade done. Should I do the solid ox? Yeah, you should probably do both. Um, if you got figures for them. Um, although, if I remember correctly, the solid ox in that army represents um, the guys from Naples, like sword and bucklerman type guys. If memory serves me correct, so. You paint pretty quick. You should be able to knock those guys out. I mean, hell, I mean, even, even I'm painting quick these days. We're painting consistent enough. I got to go back and look and see if I knocked these 12 figures out in one week or, or two. I, I'm pretty sure it was two. That would be unheard of. I could dunk them out in a week, but uh, I wouldn't have to. I, I'd have to not have a day job. And uh, since that isn't the case, um, you know, there's other things to, to get accomplished. Um, so I don't have the, I'm not one of those people that can, uh, work from home or sit at home. So, um, and we're just gonna lumberjack these pieces out. V cuts. Here's that I got several years ago. Well, maybe even 10 years ago. Uh, there was a Polish company. I want to say it was uh, Osmiel. Iconic Knights as well for the... They came out with both of the figure ranges for like the Battle of Tannenberg, 1410. So they had Teutonic Knights, but they were they were the later period Teutonic Knights. So instead of having um, the barrel helms and that kind of stuff from the early 1200s, um, they... Their knight figures had uh, bassinets and uh, those type things. So, um, but they had later poles, and I had picked up an army of uh, later poles um, to um, to do, and um, we're going to do a big battle with them. Uh, and a buddy of mine, he had picked up a, a Polish army as well, so we both had one of the armies. We got the figures. The figures were so hard the metal that was made out of them i don't know whether they had a lot of zinc in them or they had a lot of something in them i, I used to joke this and and use the metal in them to to cast the figures that's how that's how hard they were they you couldn't even clean the flash off of them because the metal was almost as hard as a exacto knife so um it was just a nightmare so uh, i ended up selling that army before i delved into it but uh I think they still make them. They may be made by someone else. And I think that the alloy now is, is not that issue. But they're beautiful figures. There's nothing wrong with the figures. Just alloy was just, you couldn't work with it um, at all. So, um, It's kind of an unusual problem to run into. Usually if you had any alloys that are behave weird, it's some of the older stuff that was made in the 80s and stuff, and, and, the, and it's very, very soft. And it becomes an issue when you're trying to, uh, when you have units like that, of that period that have um, uh, the spears cast on them and the spears are all super bendy. So that's usually the case that you run into as far as weird um, things like that. Oh, look at this, this thing bound in, it's wanting to pull the, this thing out. All right. All right, what else, what else we got here? We got uh, twice a day, patient and steady will order in a race. Well, that's for sure, you know. Um, um, good to see you again, Todd. Um, other things for, for fun, um, and just stay on this because at the end of the day, I, I want to, I want to get these guys accomplished. In other words, don't play video games or any other kind of stuff that you're doing. So, 
Um, our game group all, also plays other games, and I basically just like, okay, I'm not interested in playing those other things. Just let me, I'm, I want to, I want to play DBA, and I want to film um, can you know with this current climate of everybody wanting to tell you what to do for whatever reason what to do I'm gonna do what I like to do so um, luckily for you guys if you're into this you're gonna see more of it so yeah this is um, interesting this is binding and it's not letting it twist so that's okay I'm not gonna let this bastard win you don't get to win dude you messed with the wrong Tony all right, we're gonna let's give us a little bit more space here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, yeah. But like I mentioned in another video, I actually fortunately go to him, but nobody else is going to him, and at least we're still gaming. We're still gaming every week, so you know, a lot of people have it a lot worse than we do. So, uh, maybe that. You know why this is all of a sudden being difficult? There we go. And just like that, bam, went through. And get a pike. You get a pike, and you get a pike, and you get a pike. All right. All right, two left. Now, I haven't done this position, this pose. I mean, these are old figures, and they're weird figures that used to be sold by Black Hat, and now they're sold by Gladiator again. I guess they're called Gladiator, but... Uh, I want to say Fighting 15s has them now. I, I could be wrong. But I understand they're still called Gladiator. And um, it's like this guy's screaming something. He has an open mouth. Maybe he's saying freedom. I don't know. Who knows? He, won't, uh, he doesn't have any blue load on him. Um, <laughs> uh, we won't be basing our, our guys on that. So let's. Uh, this, is, this is inside a little bit. So let's take that off. And um, let's cut this guy here. Clean up the bottom of him. It's kind of rocky there. We'll clean up the figure a little bit more. I just want to go ahead and do this while uh, our Gala Glass guys are drying. So we only got two more of these guys, and we'll jump right back into those guys and uh, do some uh, some base gooping, as I like to call it. So let's just take the back of the back of this pike off, okay, and then and then here as well, and put a bunch of little cuts on here. It's a shame this figure is not a little softer metal, or this process would actually be a little easier to do. Um, it's not difficult, and you got to be careful so you don't cut yourself, but I'm not going to jinx myself by saying, oh, crap, I just said it. The problem with getting a finger cut is it won't hurt. You'll get a clean cut, and it'll bleed for like a day, because anything on your fingertips just down in my own blood. That's, that's how much comes out from your fingertips. You guys know. It's uh, not... Uh, it's nothing new, but you know, you're putting pressure on it, but you're not putting that much because if you go too far, you end up cutting the figure underneath. So it's kind of a, uh, a finesse thing, but so yeah, we just, we just scored it in a bunch of little lines so that we come in here and just do a bunch of V cuts and take that out. Now I'm not worried about the part behind it being super smooth because it's going to be hidden by the new pipe that we're going to put in there. So, um, that part isn't an issue. But um, we do need to take out a bit of it, okay?
All right. All right, let's try this guy now. And let's cut this down a little bit so we got a smooth surface. Okay. We're going to put this in at that angle, right. I wish I was ballsy enough to do a head swap, but that's just not going to happen. Um, that's new territory for me. And um, it's not so much cutting the head, but it's like, you know, you're gonna put the head down. You, you can get, getting the head off is fine, but getting it off in a way that, um, you know, you can reuse it as something different, so. I know some people do that, but it's not like I have a bunch of heads sitting around that uh, nothing to do. I'd have to trash another figure if I was gonna head swap them. Let's see here. Can you open up that hole a little bit? Now this is taking a heck of a lot more time, like for instance, than if you were like saying, getting the Zeiston miniatures, okay? You gotta drill the hands out on those, but those you know are meant to have their hands drilled. So they're made in such a manner that, um, they're made in such a manner that um, there's space for them to, um, for that to happen. Like I ended up drilling, uh, I got an Athenian army from Zeiston and they come with no spears. And I had to drill them all and put spears in there. I used a smaller needles for that because their spears weren't over 10 feet long. Um, so I drilled them and put all the spears in. Of course, I haven't painted that army yet, but you know, but uh, they're all done. You know, that, not this much time, but um, come on, there we go, okay. Now, I'm not sure what kind of hat this is. I'm gonna say it's a helmet, but it looks like one of those Sassanid caps. Sassanid caps are the guys that, uh, am I thinking of? The guys in the Crusades that were in Egypt. Damn it, how do I not know who it is? They're Book Three Army. Fatimids, Fatimids. The Fatimids also have uh, some caps like this. They could look kind of like that. So but we're gonna look at the, uh, we're going to look at these folks, and um, I'm looking forward to painting some color. I mean, they're not going to be gaudy colored, but they're going to be, they're going to have more color than the gallo glass. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to these guys. Uh, I'm definitely going to go and check all uh, my supply and make sure that I, in, in fact, do not have any knights. Because I'm surprised that, well, I have a ton of knights. I'm surprised that I don't have uh, knights that I... Uh, to use for, for these guys, but that's no big deal. I've already looked and seen what knights I would, I'm gonna order tomorrow if I, in fact, do not find my own. So, and then we'll go back to working on these, uh, on these pikemen, so. But I sure would like to do some heraldry next, and that just isn't gonna happen. These, um, do th these guys all have uh, shields? Yeah, they all have shields, and the shields on these guys are gonna be really basic looking. They're gonna be pretty much wooden type colors. I don't think I'm gonna go crazy on their, their shields. So um, that's at least my thought at this point, so. And I don't know where in the hell the light horse figures are that I ordered. I ordered them coming tomorrow, it's been three weeks and I still haven't gotten a notification that they've shipped. So I don't know what the hell's going on with those folks, but they are uh, not on the ball. I'm not in a hurry with them. I would just kind of like to get an update, you know? 
I don't want to get in the middle of, uh, I mean, if they're going to show up on Tuesday, I don't want to get in the middle of uh, painting these pikemen and then have to shift to that, you know, so. Um, but anyhow. It is what it is. We've got other things to work on, so. Okay, I just like to stop checking the mail every stinking day, right? Because they could, they could be in there. They could have forgot to notify me and already uh, got... Um... Now, this guy's got a hoodie. That's interesting. He's got a hoodie and he has an axe on the back. That's kind of cool. I would not call this a good casting. But we're going to try to make this guy shine. We're going to try to make this guy... Something special. This is the last one. Oh, geez. That slid off. Come on. Let's make this a little bit flatter here. You can't do this with a Dremel. You would just, I mean, it's way too freaking fast and you need to, you need some precision here because you get like one shot at it. You know, if you booger up his hand, you can still kind of rebuild one with a, an epoxy goop and get away with it. Um, it's not a huge deal, but you don't want to do that if you don't have to. Okay, and let's line it up. Okay. That goes through. This guy got through there pretty fast. It's almost like I got the hang of it. <sighs> Just in time to stop and not do any more. No. All right. Let me get my glasses so I can find them. I know it's back here somewhere. Oh, I think I just found it. There it is. Okay. Okay, so that's done on the pipe. All right, so we're gonna set these guys off to the side. We got those eight guys on there. Okay, here's the two stands for them. Okay, we don't need these. We can put these in the Irish extras box. We're gonna clean all these broken pikes out of here. We don't need this chaos here distracting us. I get rid of all this stuff. Okay, make sure we don't have anything else here. Uh, Oh, well, called into work. Wow, you're getting a lot of call-ins there. I know you're on call, but isn't it on call? You're supposed to be on call and they never call in on you. It's just their way of uh, screwing you and having a way around. But um, Yeah, mission accomplished. You got it. You got it, man. That's how you do it. Now, we're gonna, let's do a little bit of a check on here. We know these the guys that are vertical, it isn't an issue, okay? But how about these guys that have their pikes sticking out, are they going to interfere with folks in front of them? Hello. Are they going to interfere with the guys coming in front? So we got, say, one of these. We don't really care about the pike right now. No. No, we're golden. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. We're going to, when we do the same stage, like we did with these guys, with the pikemen, we're gonna make sure that they can line up uh, with each other just fine. Okay, awesome, great news, excellent. Irish extras. All right, so it's goop time. So what does that mean? 
it means we need to get our special device here, wherever I put it. Here it is. When I pull, pulled that big cutter out, it fell to the bottom here. This is what I used to use was, I used to use a little ruler here, stick it on there. This actually works better. You don't need that kind of length. So all we're gonna do is see now, because they're magnetized, see, we, you know, because they're magnetized, um, I can work on the stand and not touch the stand, okay? So let's get uh, let's get our stuff here. Not that one. There's another product I use is the Liquitex Natural Sand. That one's a lot finer, and I use that one for if I'm doing like uh, desert dunes or something like that. But this rocky type stuff works a lot better using the resin sand. Now this one was almost. Uh, this is the one that is almost out. Let's get rid of this natural sand. Uh, this one was almost all the way out. And um, I might as well grab the rocks too. Okay. Uh, this one was almost out completely. So I bought another one. And then when I got it, I didn't realize how watery this one is. And it's only watery because... Um, it's only watery because it's new. So then I realized, you know, what if I added some of this to this one, right? Because there's still plenty in here, but this stuff's kind of hard. And I think I may do that. Um, as a matter of fact, the last time I used this, I kind of blended them all together. Because I don't really want to waste this material, but this it's kind of hard to work with when it's that, that, that hard. So... Um, we're going to get our little tools here, and uh, this is just a set that I picked up from, uh, from um, Army Painter, I believe. They had it in a hobby store, and I'm like, ah, all right, well, I'm tired of using toothpicks and that kind of stuff, so let's try to give that a shot. So we're going to come in here, put one of them down, and... Um, and see what we can come up with. Let's move these two guys to the side. Let's see. And we're going to, we'll use this as a little mixer. We'll leave this one open. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this material here. You normally wouldn't do, what I'm about to do, you don't, you don't have to do with this material. It's only because I want to use some of this older stuff. I don't want to just throw this stuff away. So I'm going to take this, see how it's kind of, it's almost like Play-Doh, okay? But the new stuff is super wet, okay? Well, it's the same material. So I'm just going to mix them together. Just going to mix them together and apply it like that. All right, so let's go find it is going to take a little while. You think, oh, it's only three stands. Well, it takes a little while because you need to get in between the legs and everything. So we're probably going to be using some of these. Um, uh, we might even have to use this guy right here. Oh, wow, here's my third one. I was wondering where it was. Okay. So, and this is all water wash up. So it's not a big deal if you, um, if you get this on stuff. Um, but you don't want to create extra work for yourself. So uh, we're just going to take some of this here. Where's my, um, where's my little cloth? I think I've used this enough. About time I, I earn another uh, napkin, right? Gotta earn your napkin. All right, so let's, um, we're gonna need to get smaller amount than that. We're gonna come in here and then we're just gonna apply it. See, that's the problem is, is it likes to pull back onto whatever it is that you're using, so. Put 
put some more here. And this is going to be one of those, it's going to be overnight before you can mess with it. Now I can tell you right now, after this is dried, painting, the painting of this stuff and also, um, you know, after this is applied, just putting the painting on it and making the stand look good after this is dried for these three stands is probably a four hour project to get it right. It's not quick. Cause you know, you don't want to go through all this trouble of painting the figures. And then the next thing you know, you've got some of this ground material on the figure that you spent all these hours working on. So, you know, take your time. It's going to be, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a little time consuming, but it's, it's worth it. So, and I like to put a little as much. Okay. Um, all right, let's come over here. Hands, if you get it on your hands, just the suction of it will pull it off and you have to redo it, so. Um, Now this is another thing that it's good to keep some of those old brushes for, because what'll happen is these spots that are in between these figures, I'm gonna end up getting one of my old brushes that are no good anymore. We'll scoop some of that on it, and then we'll push it into the place that we want it to be. So, um, but you can't get a whole lot of material in with that. So we wanna use these, we wanna use these tools, these small spatulas, to, um, otherwise you'll be here all week just trying to do one stand, so. We're just going to press this down and we don't care if it's kind of thick because we're going to bury some rocks in this. Okay. That's going to give us some other, uh, and some other, uh, uh look and uh, varied appearance. That's what these little, the sweetest little guys are. And if you haven't heard me talk about this, this is actually, this is real granite. This is from, uh, I work at a concrete plant and, uh, we, uh, they sent us these for, for as a sample. For, uh, it's actual granite, so you don't want to chew this stuff. It's not like nerds or anything like that. You won't have any teeth left over to chew it on granite. <laughs> oh man, but uh, yeah, that's that's real rock. So, um, all right, we've got. Um, see, this is a tricky area in here, okay? Because I can't fit this in there, so we're just going to ignore that one, okay? And we're going to come over. To over here, sometimes you got to clean this thing from time to time. Grab another bit. So I don't think I'm going to be able to grab to put any in there with this device. We're going to try. Let's see. Can we get some in there? Yeah. All right. Now let's push it in there slowly. It's, this takes some patience, folks. So you can't just uh, you know. Dip this in, uh, in and uh, move on. It doesn't really work that way. Um, not if you want it to look good. And like I said, you don't want to spend a bunch of time painting your figures and then botch it up at this stage. You just wasted, uh, you know, precious time. So I've been using this resin sand material since about, um, well, about 10 years now. And uh, I'm really happy with it. This is not the first basic material I used. I used. I used to make my own blend with real sand from outside, uh, and um, and um, and Elmer's glue or PVA is uh, it's called across the pond, or uh, and just did my own blend. Kind of did the same type of thing, but this works better because now I don't have to blend the two, and it 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 has more texture. It's less smooth than like a sand and, and a PVA blend. So uh, I think it, this looks better.
than that. So, all right, now we're at the point where I can't use this thing anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and, you know, I'm not gonna just do the parts I can reach on each stand. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna finish one stand before I move on to the next one. What else would you guys have expected from me? Um, all right, let's grab a brush that is not worthy. Okay, here is a brush that is not worthy. Okay, and we're gonna clean this thing up with water, but a long time ago, this brush was worth a damn. Now it is not. So we're going to grab some of this stuff. You know what? We're probably only gonna use a wet one at this point for this, because otherwise we're not gonna be able to maneuver in here with it. All right, and um, let's see. Let's get some up here on the front. It's... Uh, Let's scoop this over. If a brush can reach it, I can get in there anywhere. That's why I don't um, I don't fret about this stuff. Somebody suggested that I could mix this stuff with paint and it would work. The problem with this is this isn't flat. Okay, when it's dry, it's like a semi-gloss to a gloss look. So the last thing I want to do is have to spray these guys again with some flattening agent. Okay, the only part of what I do on, on the figure that is not sealed with a um, with a varnish. And, and it's funny because every time I think of varnish, I think of like a, an old chair that, that's been treated with uh, some kind of a polyurethane type thing that makes it shiny. When I mean varnish, you know, these guys aren't shiny or whatever. But anyhow, the um, I don't want to treat the have to treat the entire stand or just the base part with with a varnish. So that's that methodology is out for me. Um, sounds good on paper, but um, no, I don't I don't think I want to do that. So um, I've got to paint this afterward. Um, it looks a little bit clearer than this, but it's still you can still tell that it was originally white. So. Um, Let's get in here with this one. This one's gonna be tricky. This one's gonna be tricky. It does shrink a little bit. It's not a lot of shrinkage, but um, it's not too bad. Okay, and once you're happy with what that looks like, um, we're gonna trash this water afterwards. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the brush in here and wrap. Um, and let's get some rocks on there, okay? We're not gonna go crazy, um, but let's get some rocks on there. Okay. Let's uh, put this one here. Put this one here. Comfortable with that? I'm just gonna pick up, make sure there's nothing on your fingers. I'm just gonna pick the fingers up and then just rub a finger along the edge because you don't want, if there's any kind of like um, overage, you wanna make sure that they there's nothing protruding off the edge of the stand that would disallow you to be able to put two of these stands flush up against each other. Just a small step you could take that make a big difference and not frustrate you later. And bam, he's done. Uh, there's a third of the uh, Gallo glass based. 
And then uh, after about eight hours or so, this will um, this will be hard enough that you can uh, you can do the basing on them. Okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Cool. Next one. All right. Now, normally the step that you would do that I'm mixing the two, you don't do that. It's just I want to use these guys, this this material up. I don't want to just throw it away. So, all right. Um, just want to be clear about that. So you're not like, well, how come you bought two different ones? It's exactly the same material. Well, is the packaging any different? It is not any different. Uh, where's this stuff made? Made in France. Awesome. Viva la France. Okay. I didn't know they made things in France anymore. Like here, they don't make anything here anymore. <laughs> That's cool. Good stuff. My uh, painting uh, palette is designed in France, but still made in China. So that's a shame. I wish the whole thing had been made in France. So, oh well. So it goes. All right. So let's uh, let's put some of this stuff here. I don't think there's any French 15 millimeter miniatures, is there? There used to be um, uh, the one guy that lived in the south of France, uh, Alain Toulaire. He passed away a couple of years ago, but he made his own ranges and he was French. But I don't think that there's any other figure manufacturers that are that are French. So um, let's see. I got one little maintenance thing to do. And okay, that's nothing. Okay, and all right. So yeah, we need to do this so we can move on to the next stage because um, the sooner I do this, I'll be able to paint the basing and it's still going to be basically an overnight type thing. Um, it's 4 p.m. here, so uh, unless I plan on staying up past midnight, which I'm not, um, there's there's no hope of messing this with, with this in the morning. Now, the bad news is it's a work day tomorrow. Boo! Which, of course, means I will, should be able to paint in the morning, but not for very long. So it's unlikely I'll be able to... These guys, You guys aren't going to see these guys until Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. So, but... Um, all right. So again, let's go ahead and um, pick these spots that are mighty open. And we're going to put them here, so. Let me do one check on one thing. Just a second, folks. I'll be right back in about uh, five minutes. Let's close this thing up. And uh, we'll finish up the basing on these guys and... Um, once the basing's done, we may have a surprise for you. We'll see.
Okay. Back again. All right. Make sure there's no uh, commentary here. No, no commentary. Okay, so let's um, let's dig back into this. Now I promised you guys a surprise, so now I want to deliver. And um, I'm trying to keep myself on a really short leash. In other words, I don't. You know, I kind of did the same thing. Is I didn't want to. I knew I was missing the mounted for this army. I didn't, I was really hesitant to order them at the beginning because in the past I have ordered stuff before I've needed it and then end up not doing anything with it. So with this with this guys, I was actually wanted to wait until maybe this stage to order the mounted, but I was actually proactive. And it's a good thing because right now I'm, they still haven't arrived. And if I would have waited till last minute, it would have been really frustrating to not have the stuff that I need to finish this project. Um, but I decided to gamble, and um, and I guess it's a good thing that I did because it was a you know the whole delay with the manufacturing process of the mounted. So I just see if I can get an uptake because it's been on Monday. It's been three weeks from ordering. So, and I haven't even gotten any kind of a notification from them saying, uh, you know, they're in the queue or anything like that. I understand that the shipping's going to take a while, but, uh, you know, when are they going to ship, dude, you know? So, um, I guess they don't have any inventory. But, uh, anyhow, regardless, um, we're going to be, if I don't have the, if I don't have the knights uh, in my, um, in my mountain of lead, or the appropriate knights. I got tons of knights. We'll order them tomorrow, but uh, it will be from a different manufacturer. Not because of I don't hear from these guys, but it's a different manufacturer that I would get them from. I'm gonna I order them from Old Glory, so um, I've ordered from Old Glory before, and I really like their figures. And uh, you know, I'm gonna get some of their Crusader knights that should fit in correct because. Uh, this time period, the knights would have uh, either sugarloaf helms or great helm type stuff. They haven't gotten into the bassinet period, like the Hundred Years' War, or Hound Skull, that kind of stuff. I have tons of that stuff for like Hundred Years' War. Um, well, how come you haven't painted a Hundred Years' War army, Tony? I've, I painted these guys specifically because they're crappy, and we're going to be able to do. Uh, you know, Soloy Silius and uh, Wimp Wars and stuff with this army. Um, those games are a lot of fun. So, But in the future, I will be doing a Hundred Years War French army. Um, oh, those are going to look beautiful with all the heraldry and stuff. Got, I'm going to love that. So uh, I'm not going to do a Hundred Years War English because both Mitch and Luke have a Hundred Years War English army. So there's no point in adding a third. You know, it's not like it's an army that I'm dying to do. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, just other people have them and none of them have the French, so might as well build the French, right? So, um, anyhow, that is, um, that is what I've got to do. I've got to make sure that I, in fact, do not have the knights in a pile of lead. Because the last thing I want to do is, uh, order them and then, oh, they were here all along. They were in this box, so, um. I'm going to have to go through there thoroughly. i got to go through it anyways because I know I've got a pack of sheep. Of uh, sheep by themselves. And um, and that's going to be part of the camp. These guys will have their own camp. Um, just... Um, and no, we'll not have a pub on the camp. <laughs> Even though it should. <laughs> uh, oh well, let's see. So let's. Uh, that's about as close as I can get with any of this stuff with with these. So let's go ahead and get the the more watery stuff and work it in here with the brush. So. Um, all right. Hopefully, you guys are painting along, getting something done while I'm uh, and. Um, I, I painted this morning. I finished these guys up between 5 a.m. and, say, 9 a.m. 
So it took me like four hours to paint two guys. And it seems like it's a lot and it, and it kind of is, but you know, I didn't want to film because, um, you know, the other folks here are asleep and stuff. I don't want to wake them up, even though they're not in the same room, obviously. Um, this isn't Europe. We don't have everybody in the same room. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but I do have my own, my own hobby room, but, um, but I, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to create that mess. So instead of that, I'm, I'm watching YouTube and watching different things. And, uh, you know, you're not as efficient as this right here. Um, I'm, you're always constantly looking at something else and from time to time looking up and that sort of thing. So, um, anyhow, it's not as efficient. James Shevlin, pub with a couple of glasses of the black stuff would look great. <laughs> would that be Guinness? <laughs> oh, man. There's a, uh, speaking of pub, um, there is a post that someone shared on the internet. And it was some folks in the UK that I don't remember where, but they had their own pub made in their backyard. And it is the most awesome thing I have ever seen. You know, it's just a, the room is probably 12 feet by 12 feet and it was freestanding and it is the most awesome thing I've ever seen. I think I got it saved somewhere, but I'm like, holy crap. I mean, I don't, I'm not a big drinker at all. I like the idea of it more than actually doing it. Okay. So, um, but um, that place was freaking amazing. They had it like added onto the back. The problem I would have with it is that I would want an Irish one and I'd want a German one and I would. <laughs> Oh, man. I could have some fun with that, but um, not really practical for Florida because it would be it'd get hot as shit in there. You know, you'd have to be air conditioning everything. But it was a, it was a separate little thing. And I think they had it all like nautical thing. It was like an English pub pub done in nautical style, you know, Victorian type thing. And I don't care what style you do. It was it, it would be awesome. Oh, man. Amazing. Definitely the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is really, really, really well done. But, but then you can't sell your house. You've got to live there the rest of your life, you know. You, you can't, you can't leave. So, <laughs> oh, that's what it is. It, it'd be hard to choose between an, an Irish one, a German one, and a cantina because you could do a really cool, like, Mexican themed one. Um, yeah, that would be really, really cool. So, oh well, it's nice to dream, right?
But going back to figures, I think in one of the earlier um, other comments, somebody was talking about the the uh, forged in battle figures, and I I would like to get a chance to paint them one day. Um, I just gotta get I just have to get figures for them of something that I don't already have. Um, I just can't justify like buying something new that I already have. I just happen to like those figures more. Um, so that's why I was saying is, you know, doing like Anglo-Saxons or something like that would be cool because uh, Mitch already has the Normans and uh, for me to do them. Um, I do uh, Italian Normans anyways. Um, I, I was, that was an army I was getting close to, to starting on. I'd actually made a, a custom figure for, uh, well, I modified an existing figure for uh, Robert Giscard. Um, and um, that I was going to use for that, but just just never got off the ground. I got sidetracked on something else. Now Mitch has a Norman army he picked up from somebody else, so it's not a really big incentive for me to do them when I could just be doing an army that he doesn't have. So that's kind of like a cooperation, you know. If I was dying to do them, you know, I'd still do them, but you know, I'm not dying to do anything in particular. I'm just just as well do something that no one else has. So. Okay, so these guys are uh, pretty much complete, and um, put them on there, and then we can go on to the last one. As you can see, this isn't a, this is not a quick process. Uh, I could probably good, do it quicker, but then it would be more sloppy. So, not really interested in doing that. Um, let's put a big one there. Again, this is it's not gonna like it's gonna be just rocks and everything. I mean their their stands are gonna look you know like these guys. We're gonna have some tufts on there and so forth. This is just to vary the ground uh, appearance a little bit. Um, and so we've got a rock on that corner, so we're not gonna put one here. We're gonna leave that be. Let's put a second one here. Okay, and we're going to just wipe the edge with our finger, make sure nothing protrudes so that the stands can fit flush together. We don't want to go through all this trouble of using Litco stands that, that are precise and dimensional gravel or ground covers that extends out past the stand and they can't, uh, they can't line up with each other well. Okay, last one, last group of clowns here. Do a final check here, make sure we don't have anything pending. Uh, okay, when basing, when basing material with a spatula, I always dope it in water between applications of the material. It stops it clean to the spatula so much. It's interesting. Um, I didn't want to get it any wetter though. Uh, we might try that next time. Have a little rock to be placed right there. We're gonna pick us a big one for that one. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, all right, so let's go to, let's put this away. We got to close the thing on the rocks. We can make sure they don't escape. Um, all right, and um, where are we at? I guess I closed both of these up. Let's move these uh, out of harm's way. Yeah, it's funny. Essex figures are kind of, uh, I'd say, on the small end of the spectrum size-wise. I mean, they're middle of the road, small size. They're definitely not bigger figures. And these figures couldn't go four across. They, um, I had to stagger them. And that's, I think, due to the way that they're carrying the axis more than anything else. And they're, you know, they're, uh, they're standing wide-legged. So let's grab some of this stuff too. And if I have extra, I will just put it right back in the container. All right.
Well, I can see we're going to be using the brush a lot on this one. Let's uh, drop that in there. And if you forget it, this stuff dries on your brush, no big deal. Well, I mean, it, it don't use a good brush. Use a crappy brush, but um, the brush will lose its shape <laughs> regardless. But it will, uh, you know, you'll still be able to use it again for the same application. You know, if you're doing this kind of stuff with a brush, it's probably one that you're not, you know, just the fact that it's it's working with these. Uh, there's there's hard spots in this stuff, whatever the... Whatever this material is, I mean, it's not rocks, but um, there's some hard stuff in here. And you, even when, even with painting over this stuff, you're going to want to use a brush that's kind of on the ratty side, you know. So after this dries, you're gonna, not going to want to use a, a good brush, so. Well, one thing's for sure. When I play this army, I will not be using a pink dye. And the reason for that is, is that I picked one of these up and I've been waiting, been waiting to use this. Got an actual Irish dye with Ireland on it. That's, uh, I believe Ireland is on the is on the one. Great. You don't want to see Ireland when you're playing it. Okay. <laughs> so this is uh, this is the dice that I'm going to use, uh, and it says uh, it actually says Ireland on the two, but I don't know if you can barely make that out. I'm using that die. So that's that's a big incentive. Um, they made several of these country dice, and uh, I want to say Coplow made them, but I found out I'm a little too late. I've got the the French one that I like to use. Um, when I'm using the French, I've got a uh, a Great Britain one. And when I have an English one, I know it's it's not Great Britain; it's just England. But uh, on those country dice, oh, I have a German one. Uh, where's my German one? Um, maybe it's in the other box. It's black and uh, white. I've I've used that one when I use the Germans, so. Yeah, so this is definitely, uh, we'll be definitely using the Irish dice with these guys, so. Um, yeah, I wish they still made these things. They made a Spanish one that I'm always looking for. Um, I don't have that one. They make a Belgian one, which is useless because, uh, you know, I don't have any Belgian armies. I guess if I was using, like, if I was using low country Spanish in one of my Renaissance games, I could use that one. But yeah, looking forward to, to using that thing, so on the videos that aren't uh, difficult to read so um, but yeah um, I always like to use a dice um, that reflects kind of the colors of the army it's just something else to do um, I haven't lately I've just been hooked on using a pink die because it's fun to whoop somebody's ass with a pink die you know when when he shows up and rolls okay <laughs> just one of those things you never know what you're going to get you know so um, it's just part of the it's part of the fun factor so uh, these three guys this is nine stands of this army of 12 so if i wanted to do the quick route into getting uh, this this army on the table i'd be doing three stands of mounted next um but they haven't arrived, so I can't really do that. And I don't really want to substitute other units, other uh, light horse stands for them just to get them on the table. I'd rather wait until they're all uh, all there. That's what happened with my Russians. I was building my early Russian army and I didn't finish the knights. Um, they're, they're hanging out over here, over here in the back. This is my knights are still back there. So I had like, uh, I had uh, seven more night figures to paint, and I ran out of time for a convention and played them anyways, won a tournament with them. I ended up using my Ostrogoths for, for 
uh, my Russian Knights, which isn't horribly far off. At least I was using um, figures whose clothing is a similar color palette. Um, the shields aren't right, but you know, and obviously the armor isn't right either, but um, it's, there's horrible, there's more horrible things I could have replaced with them. But regardless, um, I substituted the Knights for another army, played them in a tournament, won the tournament with them, and my interest in finishing them has kind of just went out the window. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to finish them, but it means that there's just no sense of urgency to do, do so. So, um, anyhow, all right, so let's, uh, let's go and get some of this stuff in here. So I don't want the same thing to happen with the, these guys, where I substitute the light horse to play them, uh, and then all of a sudden I'm not interested in, uh, in uh, finishing them up. I want to finish these guys up. So, um, you know, two light horse, that's, that's an, I mean, two figures of mounted and boom, you got to stand. I mean, that's, that's easy to do, especially the light horse for this army, because for the most part, they're not going to have any armor. They're not going to have any shoes. I don't know who the hell would ride a horse without shoes, but, uh, you know, leave it to the Irish. Uh, <laughs> and, um, they should be easy to paint, you know? Um, but we'll see when they come in. We've got stuff to do. That's why I don't mind uh, building some of these other options for them uh, with the pikemen and stuff like that. So, Yeah, I had a lot of knights, and I thought they were in one certain place, and I did have a bunch of them, but I realized that they're actually like 100 years war, period. So they're, they're too late to, to really work. I mean, they could work, and only anal retentive people like myself and maybe a few others would notice, but, you know, if I'm going to go through the trouble of, of, of painting them, I want them to look, uh, I want them to look as, as accurate as I could make them, so... I don't want to look back and say, yeah, I could have made this army look better if I was just taking my time, you know. Especially when I there's other elements of it that I could be working on. So. Besides, if I order more figures, you know, I could do another unboxing video. Well, lots of people like those unboxing videos. I certainly do. I love watching other people's unboxing videos. It's awesome seeing how things are packaged in the mail. You know, and you spent no money. So, um, I, I enjoy seeing them. Okay. Let's get this guy over. That's a hard spots to get into back here. I'm gonna take some creative painting to wiggle my way in there, but I can get in there. Let's see what else it goes. How does your metal stand holder work? Metal stand holder work. Oh, this thing? Uh, well, my stand's magnetic, and this is made of metal. Done. Oh, look, they go upside down. So that just allows me to not make a mess. Absolutely done. So, um, yeah, that's kind of why I do it. John Benkley, Tony, listening to you, chun chuntering on. Okay. Uh, while painting a 36 base classical Indian army. Oh my goodness, you're getting things accomplished. Awesome, classy Indians. Yeah, classical Indians are a great army until you play them the first time like it happened to me. And then I rolled seven ones for pips in a row. And you know, I don't know what you're building them for, but in DBA, if you roll a one, it takes two pips to move an elephant. So for the first, my, my seven bounds, my elephants couldn't move. Yeah. 
That was fun. That's another army I would never build because I know too many people that already have them. So nothing against the army, just saying, you know, at, at this point, if you've got people in your club and, and several people have the same army, there's no reason to add to that unless it's an army you're just dying to do. So uh, my Indian army that I have is Rajputs. And uh, I have another Indianish army with elephants that's on my to-do list. And it's an army no, none of my people in my group have. I just decided not to do them sometime soon because um, they um, they are too good an army. I'd rather paint some of these uh, crappier type armies next to they these make these little fast games that uh, you know. The, but the Indian, uh, I love painting elephants. I don't really care for elephants how they behave on the battlefield. They, they can't be counted on too much. Um, but obviously they're cute and, and, and a lot of fun to paint. Who the hell doesn't like to paint elephants, right? Um, but, um, yeah, classical Indians, good army. Um, good all-around army. I just don't... Uh, I, I won't have one because I have too many people that, um, that already have one. But I have Rajputs. And Rajputs, they are fun. They've got some, uh, they've got some heavy cavalry. They've got uh, some bows. They got a couple of elephants. Yeah, good stuff. I'm always tempted to, to, to eat the food of the army. Well, kind of. After I'm done with them, kind of celebratory. So, I think that started when uh, when I finished my Korean. So. Um, I love Indian food, so that's uh, I love spicy food. Indians, though, you could paint those really fast because um, the bowmen and the swordsmen are hardly wearing any clothes at all. They're wearing just like a diaper, and um, you can do various shades of darker skin. Um, the darker skin figures are a lot of fun to paint. Uh, I've got some mores I need to change into a three point com compatible, but. Um, yeah, the dark-skinned uh, armies are definitely a lot of fun to paint. Uh, they paint up quick. Sometimes they have a minimal amount of clothing, so you can really fly through them. And, um, yeah, bows. I love bows. Man, I love bows. Uh, okay, let's go into these guys and clean up the edges. Okay. And... All right, let's grab, we can go ahead and close this. Now we're gonna do something, uh, let's scoop this stuff up. Yeah, scoop this stuff up. This stuff is old, I would not do this if it wasn't this, this old material. But I just figured I'm gonna try, I, don't, I really don't wanna just throw this stuff away. You know, it just does, that doesn't make any sense. Um, all right, we can put that away. And the newer one here, you can put that away. Cause we're done with that stage of stuff. We'll clean this stuff later. We've, we've got time to clean things. You, you guys don't need me to do, uh, um, do a cleanup while we're on there. So let's pick out some rocks for this thing. We should be wanting a big rock over here in the corner. All right, let's get our uh, tweezers. Well, that's an interesting shape for one. Okay, I should be playing. Just to Maybe a quarter of the container. Okay, so uh, put this here. And a little one lives there with the big one. And let's put one there. And we're going to put a big tough thing there. So we'll, we'll leave this area open. And uh, do you want to do anything else? 
Let's put a second one here with this one. Squish them into this material. And that should hold them in there just fine. So bam, there is the three stands of the gallo glass done. So these jokers need to dry. You can tell the transparent color. Is that thunder? Is it that time again? The six stands of the skirmishers. So um, yeah, we'll just have to let these guys dry, okay? Okay, so shit, that was almost two hours. Huh. Time flies when you're having fun. All right, so surprise. I promised you guys I was going to have a surprise. I know you guys are sitting at the edge of your seat waiting for a surprise, right? Well, I can't pick out the knights because the knights, uh, I may end up having them. Uh, we'll see, but it looks like I, I won't. Um, we're going to look at some other figures that I am planning on painting for this army. Now, I had an incident that happened. I don't know if incident is the right thing, a lot more severe than it is. But I, I knew I had a picture, move the pipe bit over here to the back. I knew I had a picture of, and the problem when you have lots of Osprey books, well, I don't have that many, but I probably have 50. Yeah, I probably have 50 of them. I knew I had, this Osprey book, and I thought I had it anyways. So I had seen this picture uh, online of um, these particular this particular army, and I thought I couldn't remember what book they came out of. So. One of the, um, one of the, cool. one of the uh, allies for this, these guys, you know, because I'm looking for ways, this is a wimpy army, but I wanted a way to play them as a wimpy army and also as um, being able to play them in lots of different ways. So you could play them and you could bulk them up, use them in an open tournament, that kind of thing, okay? So, one way to bulk these guys up is by using an ally. They have only one ally, okay? And that ally is what they like to call Scots Isles and Highlands. And these guys are basically Vikings that settled in Scotland, They're kind of intermingled with them. And they... Uh, they're kind of a combination of both things. So I knew I had a book that had this particular drawing in it. I knew it was this was in an Osprey book. And these are the allies. It's the Kingdom of the Isles. These figures right here by Angus McBride. And this is out of medieval Scandinavian armies. I, I couldn't remember what book they were in and then realized, oh, that's the book they're in, and I own it too. So, this is the guys that um, that are the allies of these Irish, medieval Irish, and they're based on these figures, which are the chess set from the Isle of Lewis. So, if you look up Lewis chess set, they're really cool, actually. Little, they're they're cute little guys. Um, and there's lots of pictures of them online, and I think they found like uh, they found several, almost a hundred of these things, and they're made out of like a walrus or whalebone, and um, they have these unique shields. Well, Essex uh, Essex ended up uh, basing all of the figures on those um, whale cool figures, 
and um, they look like this. They're actually blades, is what they're considered in DBA. They're uh, they're blade stands. So I gotta have twelve of them, right? Yeah, because they could have three blades. So when you're using an ally in DBA, um, what you need to have is um, what you need to have as an ally is you have to have uh, the unit that is considered the general, which doesn't get treated as a general. So if you have a an army who's an ally, then the other element you have to pick is the most numerous element in the whole army. So in this case, it's blades. And the last element you have to pick from is any other element that you didn't choose already. Okay, in this case is mostly blades. I think you have a bow or anything else. But to stiffen these guys up, three stands of blade. Okay, so just like these gallo glass are over here, that is three stands of blade. I'm going to be painting three other stands of blade using these figures here. Okay. And they don't look like blades. Again, that's the problem with a lot of these figures. You know, they, so you can see these guys have also a sidearm of a sword. Okay, um, as their ally. Okay, and the thing with the ally is, is you can't move them for the same pip. They've got to. Um, yeah, all these guys have a sword as a sidearm as well. This guy has a full male coat. Um, yeah, that's what these guys are going to be. So we um, we happen to have these. So we're going to use these guys as uh, as allies for them. Okay. Now I probably won't paint them until all of the uh, all of the Irish themselves are completely done. But um, I got to straighten up these spears. They're they're a little on the bendy. The problem with Essex is they have spears that tend to be bendy. Um, I don't know if they're using the newer alloy yet, but they're kind of bendy. So yeah, these are uh, these are the Scott's Isles guys. So we're going to put these guys off to the side because eventually they will get painted as an ally. Okay, so uh, yeah. So next up, let's get us some coins. We're going to need eight coins. What do we need eight coins for? Well, to put the eight pikemen on. All right, and uh, I, like I said, I use super glue to glue these guys down. What do I use? Ah, uh, whatever, you know. This ultra gel control works fine. I think I still have some in here. If not, I've got plenty more. And uh, let's glue these guys down, so. Uh, all we're going to do is my preference side is to use the tail side because it's a little less lumpy. And we're just going to squeeze some right here. Bam, bam, bam. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Okay. And these will actually, and the reason why is they're going to have these uh, pikes on them, which are pretty darn smooth, okay? And uh, the, with them being that smooth, what's going to happen is they, um, I jumped ahead of myself. I didn't clean, I didn't check to see if any of these guys have any flash. They probably don't have much, so we're just going to look at each one. But um, with the pike being so smooth, What's going to happen is that um, if I use brush on paint, it's not going to stick to it really well. And I guess I could go in there and sand, the, give it a fine, just some fine sandpaper and sand the pipe down. But come on, I, I spend enough time on these figures as it is. I don't need to slow down my process even more. So I'm just going to clean the bottom, make sure that they sit proper. Bam. One guy. Next. Okay, this guy here. Make sure we're cleaning up any burrs or anything like that from where we drilled out the uh, the hands and took out the other pikes. I think that worked out pretty well. It's kind of a slower process than I would have thought, but 
Uh, it's better than having a situation where your pike is broken and you're stuck with a figure that has no pike in it. Okay, there's another dude. We're gonna glue the pikes in later after they're, uh, they're on the stand. This guy's got like a cloak or something. He's got like a hoodie. I'm not sure what that is. Not sure what kind of shoes he's got either. Yeah, we'll figure that out. We're gonna look at some, uh, we got um, an Osprey book on them. Like I said, these guys are gonna have some different colors, but they're not gonna be really gaudy. Cause remember, uh, tint is expensive. So uh, these guys are not nobility. So they're not gonna have all these uh, expensive dress wearing going on. Yeah, it's almost five o'clock and here come the thunderstorms. What else is new? That we've had rain every single day for like probably going on a month and a half now. And it's not just rain, it's thunderstorms with rain. So I don't care much for, uh, you need to put a ban on lightning. <laughs> Straighten this guy up a little bit more and then glue down, okay? And then we're gonna wait until these guys are completely glued before we glue these uh, the pikes down because we don't want them to shift or anything like that. Okay, so they're done. And these are the two stands for for the pikemen. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna be building allies for them as well. Now I think that um, let's look at their ally. They're book three seventy eight. Scots Isles and Highlands. Okay, they have a blade general, so they have to have one blade. Then their next category is they have five units that are solid blades. So that means the second unit in their ally is definitely has to be a blade as well. And then you have a choice of whether you want a third blade or a fast warband or a fast pike, an auxilia, a fast bow, uh, a, fa a fast horde, three, pike, uh, three blades, um, at least for starters. So uh, they're a littoral army. Uh, it's a shame that the ally can't be a littoral, but uh, you still use the uh, you still use the aggression and the um, and the terrain type of the of the parent army, which in the case of so. Um, that's still going to stay to them. The only thing is they're not going to be able to move using the same pit. So that's just something you got to take into effect. Now, I don't think that this army is very pip intensive. If I put down an entire forest of, of problems for them, um, yeah, it could be. But as soon as you add these three blades to the army, and I can add the three blades along with having the Scots, because uh, the Scots, even though they are another army, they're not treated as an ally. So... Um, They've got six Saloy, uh, so I can just remove three of the Saloy and use them. And then you could have a composition like have a Knight General, two solid pikemen, uh, three blades, three Saloy, and then the ally comes in with three other blades. And that's a, that, those guys could stand up in an open tournament, no problem. Um, so it just gives you different options of playing them different ways. So I think that uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with these guys because they're able to play them in type events. And uh, yeah, but anyhow, um, should have a large uh, thing here. So you said for large DBA, 36 base classical Indian army for large DBA, for big battle. So you're doing a big battle DBA all by yourself. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I've played a, a dozen games of big battle DBA and I don't like it. I don't like it because um, 
what attracts to what attracts me to me is the the small distance. I don't I don't like that. Um, Big Battle DBA reminds me of other games that I don't like to play that you don't get to finish. So they had Historicon, they would do they would do Big Battle DBA tournaments, and I just got to the point where I'm not going to play them anymore. Um, I always got basically strong armed and held against my will to forcibly have to play them, and. Um, and it's not because I don't like the teammate aspect. I like that aspect of it. What I don't like is I don't like the game within the game of setting up commands. And um, it just, there's too much planning ahead. And it reminds me of being at work and having to do that, being forced to do that, and then the plan going to shit when you start rolling less than optimal pips. And it just became frustrating, along with the whole. You guys leave the table while we discuss the battle plan. And it just took forever for the game to start. Once the game started, it was okay. But it was all that preamble of the gameplay before the game started that it just didn't, I just didn't like. Now, one of, our, uh, one of our players in our group in Florida is Don Harding. And he puts on his campaign games. And he'll do a campaign game uh, where... You have multiple people on a side, so it's kind of like a giant big battle DBA game, but everybody's commanding their 12 element contingent. And sometimes it's 9 to 15 elements that you have, but you're still playing it like a regular DBA game all beside each other. So you get the teammate aspect, so that part of it is good, but um, you don't have that whole preamble of setting up commands and all that kind of stuff. And you don't have to do all the, the uh, head of the game planning. So I don't like all of that pre-planning. I like having a teammate with you, beside you, and cheering them on and cooperating in attacks with them. I like that part. I just don't like all of the extra planning uh, that goes in, that just goes out the window when it's, you know, things don't go according to plan. So I don't know if that explains to you what I, why I don't like about it, but I've had people say, hey, you should do some battles showing us how to play the big battle DBA. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it because, well, I haven't played it in 3.0. Um, and um, just with 2.2, and I'm just, it's not my thing. I mean, I'll let that somebody else, somebody else can do that if they really want to. Um, it's just not my thing. I would rather play, build three of uh, three separate armies than build a triple sized army of, of one, of one thing. But hey, that's just me. You know, if you like that, by all means, do what you like to do, not what other people want you to do. So, when in cho when in doubt, choose freedom. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're over two hours in. I think I'm going to take a break, and uh, we've spent man a lot of time this weekend painting. So that's not like I regret it. We've been definitely kicking ass. So hopefully, you guys got something out of it, uh, even if it's just my ramblings. But, uh, you know, maybe you get, did some painting as well while you're watched along. But, uh, hey, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel so as soon as I'm on, online, you can see and get notified of that. And hopefully join in and, uh, and chit-chat back and forth. I appreciate it. Um, and, uh, you know, give me a like as well as you want, you know, as well. And, uh, hey, there'll be more videos coming. We'll be doing a, vi we'll be doing a filming of uh, some uh, games tomorrow night which you guys probably won't see until Tuesday morning. We've got to do some editing to them, some minor editing, but uh, we should have a, uh, a themed event then. And, uh, you know, you guys can check that out on Tuesday. But until then, we'll catch you guys next time. Happy painting and uh, keep doing what you'd like to do. See you later, folks. Bye-bye.